you're on a boat. To make matters worse, you're not alone. With you on this boat are a powerful species of, of creatures full of love and hate. And to make matters even worse, to make things even more horrifying is that you can't tell what they're displaying when, whether it's one, love, two, hate, or three, ambivalence. Lifeboat is a game about social relationships. Six people are picked to live in a boat, and this is their boat here. As you see, they're all on the boat. This is the back of the boat, and this is the front of the boat. The nice thing about being in the front of the boat is you're going to get first choice on items because at each turn, a round of turns begins with six items or however many people you're playing. That number of items drawn from the provision deck, that's the things that you uh, managed to salvage from the cruise liner that you were on. And um, the first person in the boat gets to pick the first thing they want and then passes it back. And then the next person gets to pick the thing they want and passes it back. So Lady Lauren here, she's going to get the pick of the litter uh, from the provisions. After the person in the back of the boat gets their provision, we're going to move back to the front of the boat and we're going to take turns from front of the boat to back doing actions. Each person gets to do one action or they could do nothing at all. Lifeboat's special in that it's one of the few games where it can be advantageous to do nothing when you get a turn. Uh, for Lady Lauren, for example, I find it's, it's very helpful. And a lot of the times, each game is, of Lifeboat is very different uh, to do nothing. <laughs> and the reason why is because if you do nothing, you're less likely to get thirsty. You don't want to get thirsty because you can get hurt from thirst. So after, after everyone does their actions, there's going to be a row deck um, or a navigation pile. I don't know what it's called in the game. Over here to the side, that's, that's determined when people row. When people row the boat, they can put cards to, in this navigation pile. And then the person in the back of the boat, this is their special power, gets to look at these after everyone's done their action or done nothing and determine which one, which way the boat's going, essentially. So what this means is, so one, they can determine uh, who goes overboard, which is bad, that can hurt you, and it can make you lose your items. Um, two, it can determine if you get close to shore. If there's these birds, you get close to shore, you need four of those to win. And then finally, and importantly, it can determine who gets thirsty. So thirst is potential damage if you don't have water. If you have water, you can slake off the thirst. Otherwise, you're going to get hurt from the thirst. So if you look at this card here, um, anyone listed in the middle here would would get thirst, if, would get damaged if they don't have water. Anyone who fought that turn would get damaged. So if the captain fought, he could get two damage. And then anyone who rode would also get damaged. So that's why it can be nice to do nothing, because if you do nothing, you're not going to get thirsty. Each time you play Lifeboat, you're going to have a different social dynamic. And that's really what makes the game interesting and exciting. Uh, and how that dynamic is determined is by the random deal of these love and hate cards. Now, I don't know what they are, but I will interpret them for you. Okay, so here we have an interesting situation where Sir Stephen both loves and hates Lady Lauren. That means that if Lady Lauren survives, he's going to get her survival value of... If of eight, and if she dies, he's going to get her size of four. So he probably wants her to be alive, but he wins either way. So maybe he's going to be ambivalent towards her. The kid here loves the captain and he hates Frenchie. That means if the captain survives, he'll get five points. That's the captain's survival value. And if Frenchie dies, he gets six points, which is Frenchie's size. So he has a potential of 11 points there if he can help ensure that the captain survives and Frenchie dies. The kid is also going to get nine points if he himself survives. So it's good for the kid to survive. Now these love and hate cards are hidden. So a lot of the game is trying to suss out who loves who and who hates who and who's working with you and who's working against you and who's working with you in some, some instances and who's working against you in other instances. A big way that that comes into play is through fights. Now fights happen, um, not, no one can really decide to have a fight, but they can uh, make it likely for a fight to happen. So how that can happen is say um, the first mate here who's big, and he's in the wrong spot, wants to go to the front of the boat. Okay, so he says, Lady Lauren, I'm gonna try to go to the front of the boat. Lady Lauren can either say yes and acquiesce and then just switch places with him, which is not good for her, or she can say no, and that's going to start a fight. So they're going to poke up and poke down. 
like so. Now everyone else, um, as they decide, as they determine, as they, you know, there's no real turn order for this, can decide to pick sides, okay? So say Sir Stephen loves Lady Lauren, he might pick her side if he thinks they can win the fight. Say the kid really likes the first mate, he might pick the first mate side. Now, um, could also be that people love someone or hate the other person, but still try to sit out because they're, you know, the kid, for example, might want to do that because he doesn't have much size. It's easy for him to die. That's a, that's a measure of fighting strength and hit points, both. Now, what does Frenchie think about this whole thing? Uh, let's pretend he loves the first mate. So he might want to join the first mate's side in order to protect the first mate from uh, defeat. On the other hand, he let's pretend he also hates the kid, so then he might want to join Sir Stephen and Lady Lauren to, sh to ensure that the kid gets hurt, because whoever loses the fight, everyone on their team gets hurt. It's really hard to say. You can't judge based on one instance what someone's motivations are. Even though the rule set is fairly simple, Lifeboat feels like a very full game. It engages the emotions, it engages the kind of like social tendrils, figuring out what everyone's thinking around you, that kind of uh, social periphery that you must engage, and even, even as, as it demands uh, uh, you to deduce and to try to reason uh, what, what's going on around you. Um, you, you have to compete and you have to cooperate if you want to survive, if you want to get your points. You can't do one or the other. You, it, it's not a, a cut and dry situation, rarely. It is a game of games, so there are situations where, depending on how the cards deal out, where it can be fairly cut and dry, but it's different every time and there's always that act of discovery. Oh, what kind of game of lifeboat is this going to be? Is this going to be one we've done before? I've actually had the same, the cards deal out the same way with the same group of people twice, which I felt was kind of unlikely, but it happened. And we, but the game still played out differently. In part because we had that memory of the last time and we were like, well, is it really like this again? You know, where there's this particular power block because these particular characters have the same love and hate relationships, exact same car deal. Anyway, when you set out on Lifeboat, you have to uh, appreciate and communicate with the other people who are setting out with you and understand that it, it is a randomized game of games. You're not going to know exactly what kind of game you're going to be playing. You're not going to know that here is a game with a traitor. You're not going to know that here is a game where we're going to strike out at each other no matter what. You're, you're not going to know that here is a game where we're necessarily working together. We all have our own loves and our own hates, and we don't really necessarily know what other people, what motivates the people around us. Trying to suss that out while following your own wants is swimming in a in the sun in a pool of uh, shifting sharks. It's terrifying, but very difficult to play alone. Lifeboat.